It's funny. No one asks you if you want to become a poet. They all just assume you'd love it. No, it's not like a, a very famous poet on whose steps you should follow had ever come from Kapsoya Primary School. No! It's, it's ridiculous. And the reason someone decides you should become a poet is even worse than ridiculous. It's not, it's not how good you are with words, it's, it's not the number of hearts that your words have broken. It's not because you don't have another dream. No, you want to be Mariah Carey for God's sake. It doesn't get dreamier than that, no, it doesn't. Mariah Carey. I mean, you, you know all the songs, you can hit all the high notes, you have a band and you have a plan. Your friend Massey will rap as you sing. Easy, right? But no. <laughs> Poetry. English. That's the real one. You speak better English than any of the other kids in your 1998 Standard 2 class. English! It's not even your first or your second language. English! <laughs> Mrs. Otieno. That's the genius with the poetry plan. This is how it happens. The low chatter of bored kids halts one afternoon, right after lunch, before the break be before the break ends. Mrs. Otiero strides into the classroom, all all the skirts and blouse and palm hair that needs changing and palm shoes, points at you with fingers that still have chalk residue under the nails and says, Wait, 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 uh, uh, you, you, no, not you, the other one. Stand up, come on, go follow me, follow me. So you you stand up and follow her, bewildered, wondering what kind of trouble you are in this time. And your classmates, they all pile on the windows, staring at you as you look up to the, to the towering figure in front of you. Well, she's actually pretty short and, and plump. It's just that you're so tiny, she looks like Goliath to you. So you're just looking up to her. And Mrs. Otieno is rummaging through her handbag, and you're expecting the worst. And she fishes out a piece of paper and hands it over to you. I want that memorized by tomorrow. And then she disappears. Right then, there's a cling, 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 cling. The school bell rings. <laughs> And as if on cue, the skies open and rain thunders down upon Capsoe. You duck into the classroom. It doesn't have a ceiling, so the rain pounding upon the iron sheet roofs feel like it's, like it's right within you, inside you. You unfold the piece of paper and stare at it. It doesn't make sense. Your classmates scramble all around you, grabbing at your hands and almost tearing the piece of paper to bits. They are just as puzzled as you are. Until some brilliant person proclaims the poem. <laughs> and you all go, ah, the poem. And then someone else asks, poem me? <laughs> and you all go silent. Now, before you can put your heads together and figure out what the poem is, your class teacher hops into the classroom, folding a wet umbrella, and you all, you all scramble to your seats, tripping and falling over each other. You stash the poem in your bag and focus on the teacher in front of you. But you're actually listening to the rain, wondering if that is how applause feels like when Mariah sings. The day ends as they all do, when you go home, help your aunt with chores, do regular eight-year-old things, eat, watch TV, sleep, dream of Mariah, wake up, eat, go to school, you know, regular eight-year-old life. Regular, good, stress-free, no taxes to file kind of life. And you forget all about the previous day, until you bump into Mrs. Atiyah. Hey, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, 
Now, did, did you do my assignment? Well, what, 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 do you, what do you mean, no? Ah, pana, 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 pana. What? Why? I did, I did poetry. What do you mean? Hey, hey, Kucha, I did, I did poetry is for dreamers who live in a fantasy world. Kucha, she drives you all the way to the staff room. And before you can think, before you can open your, your mouth again to fight for these rights that you don't know exist yet, you can see a king hovering above your head. And faster than you can say, Brikicho, it's cutting through the air with the weight of a heart, P1 teacher's ego, and it's Puna, Dani, Puta, Kuta, Kutu, Tawala, Hapa, Wewe, Puff. <laughs> Every blow lands somewhere different. Every blow reminds you who you are and where you are and what your position is. This is 844. And in this system, you're not a person. You're just a thing. You're a thing to be beaten into shit. And it doesn't really matter if you die. Your health doesn't matter. Your, your growth, your growth doesn't matter. Your education, <laughs> Matter. What matters here is obedience. Obey your teacher and protect her frail ego. The next day, you have the point memorized. Or the next time you have that conversation with the teacher again, it's not that bad. It doesn't descend into blues. It's 2007, Form 3, election year. School mind doesn't really care about elections. All you want is a chance to get out of school, to see boys, to buy pin pops, and to buy smokies. The end. And you get the chance, all right? You get the chance, as does everyone else in the music club. But right after the first meeting of the term, your teacher pulls you aside. And he's tall. He's really, 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 really tall. So tall with shoulders stooping like they're about to fall off in the next step. And he pulls you, and he's skinny. Very skinny, come and nasty. He's so skinny, in fact, that whenever a strong wind blows in the school, everyone holds a collective breath, praying that he doesn't snap into two. And he pulls you across. He wears his glasses low and peers up above them to look at you, scrunching his face like he really can't see. You actually wonder why he bothers with the glasses. He peers above them. So he stares at you. And you can tell that he's about to tell you something, but he doesn't know how to turn it. And everyone in the school knows him as Mr. So Now. You're standing right outside the stuff. So now, uh, we, we, we have a small problem. Eh? Um, you see, we, we, we don't have original pieces this year, so self, self composed. Uh, so, so, so now, um, uh, have you ever written a poem before? Or original? We must be singing. We are so no. No, 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 excuses. no, excuses. no, 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 and that's it. He disappears into the staff room and leaves you standing outside. A 17-year-old who has never even thought about being a writer. And at that moment, as if to mock you, fat raindrops start hitting the ground all around you. See, Asumbi Girls High School is about an hour from the lake, home lake. 
and the conventional rain descends like it's coming back home. You run off. And that evening, during preps, as the rain threatens to tear the roof apart and lightning flashes outside, you reach under your desk, take out your diary, and write the first words. Mr. So now loves it, loves it so much that you start rehearsing immediately. And you rehearse for weeks so much that you actually start believing that maybe you're, you're, not, you're not that bad at this thing. Maybe you're actually good. Yes. Actually, you don't, you don't, yeah? And on the day of the competition, the school bus takes you to, to the venue of the competition and you get there late. You don't even get to perform the piece. And you swear to never, ever write a poem in your life, ever. But that's, that's the thing with poems. You don't have to write them for them to find you. And the next one finds you on a date. A cheesy one, but still cute. It's, it's, your, it's your first year at Moi University, Chekpelel campus, and this, this boy asked you out. And, well, none of you really knows how to do this thing, so words ran out halfway through. And after a few minutes of awkward silence, he pulled out his phone and read you something he wrote. And at the end, you didn't know whether to be impressed, so you, you asked a question. See, see your poetry. Ah, see poetry, my dear. See poetry, in in spoken word. Ah, uh, uh, difference. Ah, uh, difference, difference. Ah, uh, uh, check you that you are, that you are too different, my dear. You know that you are different, so you are. That you are different. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, check it, check it. Kuna, 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 kuna staff to not account for. Kuna, kuna staff, yeah. Ki grow BV, I'm a poet. Yeah, not any. Kuna kadi, BV, yeah. And it's a fit is an old he who can come through the idea and the baby come the idea. Uh, so you go and you meet the group. And the group has this performance session. And you've been singing all along. You've been singing in school, you've been singing in church, you've been singing everywhere. So when they ask you to do something for them, you sing. And soon you find yourself singing even, the, even more for them. And you find yourself singing with them. And then singing with him. And then singing alone. And you find yourself on stages you never thought you'd be on. With people you never thought you'd be with. And the next time you pick up a pen to write a poem. It's not for a teacher. And it's not for school. It's not for competition. The next time you pick up a pen to write a poem, it's, it's for this thing inside you, this, this ache, this need to say something. And you wanted to have a reason. You wanted to touch someone, you wanted to have a home, a life. It becomes your way of reaching out it becomes your way of holding on to things and holding on to people. It becomes your way of finding a purpose. It becomes your way of finding a foothold in the wild, even when everything is slipping away. It becomes your way of gaining 